Welcome back, IQ Ninjas! In the last episode, we covered the important events in American history that occurred between 1800 and 1850. Now, we'll jump right into the American Civil War. Before we begin, though, we should review a history of slavery before the 1850s. Most of the citizens of the U.S. today agree that slavery is a horrible act, but they might be surprised to learn that it wasn't always thought that way in the U.S. In fact, much before Jefferson's presidency, slavery wasn't a big issue in the federal government. The United States Constitution, yes, the governing document of America, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 1 states that the migration or importation of such persons as any of the states now existing shall think proper to admit shall not be prohibited by Congress prior to the year 2808. What does this mean? Well, simply, the federal government cannot legally outlaw slavery until 1808. What? Why? The Founding Fathers knew that slavery was an essential part of the economy for a growing nation, and without it, the economies of the South, and eventually the country, would fail. That's why they made it illegal for Congress to outlaw slavery until 1808. Congress and the Founding Fathers had long debated over this controversial issue. In 1790, two Quaker delegates objected to the trade. Their opinion probably would have been better accepted if they were not Quaker and had not sat out on the American Revolution. This act, along with their faith and their attempt to alter the very way of life of the southern regions, disgusted several delegates, which is why James Jackson, a delegate from guess where, Georgia, stood up to counter the Quakers' argument. He was quickly joined. James Madison, known to be decisive yet always keep a cool composure, advised Jackson not to explode insults over the abolitionist movement and that it would soon blow over. But Madison was Despite the well-known fact that the Constitution made slavery legal and that it couldn't be changed, the petition made it to the Pennsylvania Abolition Society. There, the petition was modified and then publicized greatly. It made two very important arguments against Jackson. One, that slavery violated the values of the revolution and that the general welfare clause of the Constitution could create an amendment to the document and remove the 1808 section. It also came with another bullet to the slavery sponsor argument. The Abolition Society's document beheld the signature of patriotic heavyweight Benjamin Franklin. Long arguments ensued, and the major product was that most of the northern states abolished slavery in their own states. The years followed, and now we jump into 1850, where the Compromise of 1850 was enacted. This executed five laws. It abolished the slave trade in Washington, D.C., which one would think to be a benefit for the North, but was actually pushed by the South because it would make finding runaway slaves easier. The Compromise also enforced the Fugitive Slave Law, which stated that runaway slaves had to be returned to their owners even if they made it to a free state. But, in return, the Utah and New Mexico territories were created and given the power to decide for themselves whether they wanted to be slave or free, and California was admitted to the Union as a free state. By the way, a slave state is a territory or region of land that is supporting slavery, and a free state or territory is one that didn't. Two years later, in 1852, Uncle Tom's Com Cabin is published by Harriet Beecher Stowe. This book had slaves as main characters, and they openly debate the fugitive slave law, the causes of slavery, and racism in general. The overall message of the book was an effort to end slavery. It was criticized by both those who thought it too harsh and rash, and those who thought it not direct enough. But while a majority in America chastised the novel, most internationally praised it. Stowe's second novel on slavery, Dread, was much more denunciative of the U.S. government's indecisiveness to end the bondage. After Stowe's controversial novel was released to bookshelves near you, the Dred Scott case was presented in court. Well, actually, that had happened in 1847, but it was 10 years later, now in 1857, that the Dred Scott decision was made. Essentially, a slave named Dred Scott sued his owner for his freedom. After a series of losses and wins that soon got overturned in city and state courts, his case made it to the U.S. Supreme Court. But the Southern sympathizing judges ruled that no person of African descent, slave or free, could become a citizen, and therefore never even had the right to sue in court. He remained a slave until shortly afterward, when white childhood friends bought his and his wife's freedom, yet unfortunately, he died just nine months later. This decision outraged the abolitionists, and most of the North. It could probably be cited as a cause for the 1859 raid of Harper's Ferry. In mid-October, John Brown, an extreme abolitionist, and his group of followers staged a raid on Harper's Ferry in Maryland. 
Brown had a long history of violent fighting for the end of slavery. He had fought in Kansas and had triggered a summer of guerrilla warfare. Afterwards, he moved to the east and raised an army of supporters, numbering a scanty 22. They attacked the Maryland town and held the armory. They had hoped slaves would join into the attack and they could arm them and convince them to join the force. But surprisingly, none really did. His group was surrounded and almost half were killed. Brown was then hung. His last words were in a note that read, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood. Despite the fact that his uprising failed, it created even more tension between North and South and would eventually become an important pivoting point for the upcoming war. The Compromise of 1850, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, the Dred Scott decision, and John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry all added to the decades-old frenzy over slavery and the future of the African American. A presidential election was less than a year away, and there was blood in the water. And that is where we must end this episode of Quantum Blackboard U.S. History. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, as well as go to www.quantumblackboard.com to watch more videos and become an IQ Ninja. See you next time!